हेलो एवरीबडी टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द प्री ऑपरेटिव प्लैनिंग इन द टोटल नी रिप्लेसमेंट द सर्जरी बिफोर सर्जरी डबल ऑपरेशन एज अ सर्जन वी हैव टू ऑपरेट ट्वाइस वंस इन आवर माइंड एंड वंस इन ऑन आवर पेशेंट प्री ऑपरेटिव प्लैनिंग इज टू बी डन एंड गोल्स नीड टू बी सेट यू शुड एस्टैब्लिश द गोल फॉर्मुलेट द प्लैन एंड देन एग्जीक्यूट जनरल गोल एस्टैब्लिश द डायग्नोसिस डिटर्माइन इफ इट इज ट्रीटेबल विथ टोटल नी रिप्लेसमेंट एवॉइड एनी प्री इंट्रा और पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑप्टिमाइज द पेशेंट आउटकम बोथ मेडिकल एज वेल एज फंक्शनल टेक्निकल गोल एस्टैब्लिश द रिलेशनशिप बिट्वीन द मेकेनिकल एंड एनाटॉमिकल एक्सेस ऑफ द फीमर एंड द टीबिया डिटर्माइन द एप्रोप्रिएट बोन कट्स अलाइनमेंट एंड डेप्थ Anticipate the bone deficiency or defect and plan for the bone grafting or augmentation with the stem. Determine the ligament status. This will tell us about need for release, need for substitution, whether modified surgical approach is required or not. Formulating plan to achieve the goal. This we will see under following heading: general screening, physical examination, radiological assessment, instruments and implant. प्री ऑपरेटिव काउंसिलिंग जनरल स्क्रीनिंग हिमोग्लोबिन ऑफ द पेशेंट मस्ट बी मोर देन टेन ग्राम पर डिसीटर देन टी एल सी ब्लड ग्रुप शुड बी डन सीरम एल्यूमिन शुड बी मोर देन थ्री ग्राम पर डेसीटर एच बी एवन सी शुड बी लेस देन एट पॉइंट फाइव बेसलाइन सी आर पी एंड एस आर लेवल मस्ट बी डन आर ए फैक्टर एंटी सी सी पी सीरम यूरिक एसिड मस्ट बी चेकड रुमेटेड आर्थराइटिस In case of rheumatoid arthritis, we should start our patient on the disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs. Check the cervical spine to rule out subluxation of the C1 and C2 in case the patient requires the general anesthesia. Check for any foot deformities. Whether they, if if they are present, they need to be corrected first. Be more careful when you are planning a bilateral total knee replacement. Do stress like stress echo. General screening is to rule out the any source of the infection in the body that include dental checkup dermatologist checkup ENT checkup examination of spine hip ankle and the foot if hip is involved tackle the hip first as the total knee replacement is very difficult if the hip movements are restricted distal pulses and sensation must be checked when in doubt about the distal pulsation always get the doppler done If doctor is doubtful, get the angiography done. In such cases, we avoid using the tourniquet. BMI of the patient must be checked. For BMI more than 30 degree, we may expect the difficult exposure and need for the longer incision. If patient is shorter than 5 feet, he may require the smaller implant. One must inform the implant provider in advance. Similarly, in very tall patient, we may require a bigger size implant. smallest and largest size implant are rarely used but should always be kept physical examination nature of the pain pain should be reproducible and consistent with the disease rule out any radiculopathy claudication both vascular as well as neurological take the opinion of the spine surgeon if and when required do the magnetic resonance imaging if required rule out peripheral neuropathy if patient is diabetic look for skin and soft tissue status gait lateral thrust in varus deformity you will see medial thrust in vulgar deformity posterior thrust in the posterior capsular laxity neurological status must be checked patient must be made to stand on the heel and the toes and finding should be noted you can very well make out the lateral thrust in this patient's gait with varus deformity rule out the complex regional pain syndrome hypersensitivity temperature changes hair loss symptom disproportionate to disease process check for the skin over the knee skin over the knee is very mobile in flexion and extension almost 40% stretching happen any old incision or scar especially from high tibial osteotomy 
arthroscopy, previous fracture surgeries or infection or local treatment. Do not take the parallel incision. We must have at least 7 to 8 cm skin breach. In case of puckered scar, we may need to take the plastic surgery opening. Fragility, fragility and atrophy of the skin should be noted. Please note whether there are any fungal infection or psoriasis. Peculiarity of the blood supply of the skin is the blood supply on the anterior aspect of the knee is flowing from medial to lateral side. Blood supply to be checked, we must check the soft tissue status, angular deformity, virus vulgus need to be checked. If correctable, that, that means it will require the minimal soft tissue release. Fixed angular deformity will require more release. Flexion contraction is very problematic and final check should be done under anesthesia, especially in rheumatoid arthritis patient. In such cases, we need to plan posterior stripping, removal of posterior astrified or we may require more distal femoral cuts. If knee is in hyperextension on examination, if hyperextension is less than 10 degree, minus 2 to minus 4 distal femoral cut or cruciate retaining total knee replacement can be done. If hyperextension is more than 10 degree, we should be very cautious. We will require rotating hinge prosthesis. Post patellectomy patient will require the posterior stabilizing fixed bearing knee. Range of motion. Patient will ask you how much movement they will get after the total knee replacement. Your answer should be they will get the same movement which was there prior to the surgery. This is due to the quadricep contracture. Stretching or exercises can improve the range of motion by mostly by 10 degrees. If patient has less than 90 degree flexion preoperatively, anticipate a difficult exposure. Whether I can use a high flexion knee, it takes the posterior wall, pre-op flexion of 120 degree is needed. High flexion knee is not suitable if deformity that is virus and vulgar deformity is more than 20 degree and thigh cup index is more than 90 degree. Radiological assessment. Evaluation should be done with the long leg flame, both knees standing x-ray AP, lateral x-ray in 30 degree of flexion and merchant's view. Goals. What, what we are going to see, we are going to see the correct alignment, level and orientation of the bony cut, rough sizing of the component and we should anticipate the bony defects. Accurate limb length alignment is the most important factor for the long term outcome of the total knee replacement. Mal aligned knee increases the bony wear and the poor outcome and the failure. John Install originally described the mechanical alignment of the knee in total knee replacement in 1985. Straight line passing through the center of femoral head to the center of knee to the center of ankle is the HKA is the mechanical axis. This is achieved by perpendicular to mechanical axis of the femur and the tibia in total knee replacement. This allows the balanced distribution of joint loading forces between the medial and lateral component on the both side of the interference and soft tissue. Loosening of oblate will not occur due to this equal distribution of the forces. Acceptable alignment is plus or minus 3 degree to neutral alignment. More than 3 degree are called as outlier. In conventional total knee replacement, we are using extramedullary jig for the tibia, which is perpendicular to mechanical axis of the internal intramedullary jig of the femur. Extramedullary tibial jig does not affect the curvature of the tibia, so we can have a predictable tibial cut. In tibia, anatomical axis and mechanical axis are the same, but in femur, anatomical axis and mechanical axis are different. Problem with intramedullary femoral jig is that femur has different anatomical and mechanical axis. We do fixed angle distal femoral vargas correction of 5 to 6 degree. This is a weak link due to the variation femoral anatomical mechanical axis that is fama angle. Fama angle will change when there is excessive femoral bowing, there is varus or vargas mal alignment, when there is coxa vulga and coxa vara. Long leg fig are more important for getting the pharma angle. Short film are short sighted and long film give much more idea. 
correct limb rotation is very important if you see round patella and triangular trochlea that is incorrect rotation if you see patella central and dome shaped trochlea that indicate the correct rotation in this x-ray we have calculated all the angles preoperatively here you can make out the patella is in the patella is located medially and eccentric and triangular trochlea is seen and here patella is in the center and you can see the dome shape the trochlea weight bearing x ray varus and vulgar deformity are for better for justification non weight bearing x ray are better for planning they will give the idea about the bone loss and how much deformity is correctable kl guidelines kl classification for osteoarthritis knee is, is graded into 1 to 4 for grade 4 we require the total knee replacement that is severe osteoarthritis in that case joint space is greatly reduce there is subchondral sclerosis also in ap x ray view measure the angular deformity angle and level of the cut should be determined look for any osteophyte that will give the tending effect on the collateral ligaments all those osteophyte must be removed femoral entry point should be aligned with the axis of the femoral canal anterior posterior x ray will give the idea about the bone loss and proximal tibial configuration these are the osteophyte and these are giving tending effect on the medial collateral ligament these osteophyte must be removed in lateral view we should look for the anterior trochlear surface then posterior femoral condyle then bone loss posterior tibial slope we can calculate the posterior condylar offset ratio patellar position tibial tubercular position then patella baha and inshal salavati ratio it should be less than 0.8 you should be seeing lateral x ray like this the this yellow line is showing anterior cortex then this is the distal femoral cut and this here you can make out the tibial slope and posterior osteophytes these are the different cut this is proximal tibial cut then there is distal femoral cut then chamfer cut anterior and posterior chamfer posterior femoral cut and anterior femoral cut this i will explain you inshal salavati ratio tendon length upon patellar length length of the patella divided by length of the patella tendon patella baha that is it is less than 0.8 normal is 0.8 to 1.2 and patella alta that is high lying patella that is more than 1.2 patella baha with less than 90 degree flexion we will like, we will have a difficult exposure chances of patellar tendon avulsion will be more you can very well make out popliteal rc class calcification in the lateral view in that in such cases we do not use tourniquet merchant view patello femoral arthritis is better visualized on the merchant view also we can see about the patellar tilt subluxation dislocation sulcus angle patellar mild tracking prediction then we should also classify which type of patella is morphologically whether it is type a type b or type c this is better visualized on the merchant's view here red line is showing sulcus then the patella and patellar tilt angle you can call medial side is and lateral side is visualized x ray with magnification marker can be used for 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 doing templating identify the difficult knee more than 20 degree fix varus or vulgus more than 20 degree fix flexion deformity less than 70 degree flexion previous surgery like high tibial osteotomy post patellectomy old fracture gross instability bone loss and neuropathic joint these are the difficult knees instrument and implants for difficult knee plan for constraint prosthesis graft wedges stem 
for vulgar deformity, fixed flexion deformity, hyper extension deformity, stiff knee will need the extensional extensile approach. These are constrained implant, PS implant, CCK implant, and hinge TK. We should check all the component and sizes. Matching femoral component in AP dimension, bone cement, we are using striker simplex today. We should know preoperatively what is the setting time of the cement, then whether extra pack will be required or not, that should be noted. Preoperative counseling. The, we should explain the surgical step, hospital stay, duration, recovery phases. We should explain the risk and benefit. Discuss the postnatal complication like infection, stiffness. Goal is our our goal is pain relief and improved mobility. Rehabilitation plan must be explained and emphasize the importance of physiotherapy to the patient and patient's participation post surgery in the physiotherapy and rehabilitation plan should be explained. Recovery timeline should be told to the patient and he should set the realistic expectation. Improvement take month. Full recovery may take 6 to 12 months. This should, this must be conveyed and, uh, and told to the patient right in the beginning. Then he should be discussed without the weight management, home modification, activity limitation, no high impact sports. These all should be counseled prior to surgery. Extensive viral deformity that is corrected with the long stem prosthesis. Then vul severe vulgar deformity in a short stretched lady. This bone defect was augmented with screws. You can make out various deformity. I thank you all for your patient listening. Let's pray to the God. May all be blessed with these qualities. Empathy, transparency, compassion, no hypocrisy, forgiveness, process satisfaction and involvement, dissolution, patience in spite of provocation, modesty, humility, thoughtful tolerance, gratitude, bliss, oneness, bliss of oneness and altruism. Thank you very much.